So today we're going to be talking about the balance data slate that just came out. And uh, so we've got a couple of things. Number one, we've got like a little bit of clarifications and things like that. Most of the changes are easy to read. They are in red. Now, some of the changes are from the previous balance data slate. So it's still there. Like it doesn't really matter too much. Um, and so things like that haven't really changed. Things like devastating wounds haven't really changed. There's a clarification that just happens after everything happens. Insane bravery, firewatch. Like those things didn't really change from the last one. Um, other than that, the faction rules is where we see most of the changes. Now, if you have a ver uh, your faction, something in there might might have something happen to you and whatnot. One of the biggest things that we see, I'll, I'll talk about like my favorite things as we go, but sisters, you don't use like unlimited faith dice anymore near the triumph. You get two max. You know, custodies, they actually get their feel no pain against devastating wounds now. Big change. Everything else stayed the same. Eldari got quite a few changes. Um, Strands of Fate, only six dice instead of 12 at the start of a game. Might encourage folks to take some Guardians. Um, Fate's Messenger only works for the bearer of the units. You can't use it for the actual unit of Wraith Guard. Eldrad Uthwan um, change just clarifies that it's three dice uh, to make it nine. Night Spinners changed their monofilament ability. Now it lets you advance, but it's the normal minus two to move, advance, and charge. And it's any enemy units are still very, very powerful. But now they're paying for it in the point state update. The Incarn um, can now bounce around once per turn. Now, what the reason this is relevant is a lot of times you'd grab the Incarn, teleport out somewhere, um, attack a unit, challenge out the character in the unit, and literally teleport again, but then not be in combat anymore. So you could like keep the incarn safe from like retaliation in close combat and things like that. And uh, so they got rid of that, which is good in my opinion as well. Uh, then we have Wraith Guard. Uh, they can they got a, quite a big hit. They cannot just shoot at anything with their shoot back ability. They have to shoot the thing that shot them back, which means that you can deal with them a lot easier than it was before. Because before you'd like put stuff close to them, and even if you shot with something from far away, they'd shoot at everything close to them and just murder it. So now the interaction has changed where it's not like you can actually try and kill them and try and deal with them instead of like just ignoring them and hoping that of hoping for the best throughout the course of the game, basically. Um yeah, but yeah, I know, I know. All hail Archon Stubbings, our new love boat captain, I know. Um, Homunculus have been hard work getting this back up. Eldari got hit hard. Yes, they did get hit hard. Don't worry, I am recording this, so I will be putting it as a recording after the fact, so that we can just, it's nice and smooth and people can watch it after. Uh, so then we have the Agents of the Imperium. Nothing really changed there. Astrum of the Tarum can do orders when they get out of a transport or come in from reserve. That's pretty cool. Uh, Blood Angels get plus two strength, you know, because that's something they really needed when they charge. It's not just plus one strength, plus one attack. It's plus one strength. I, I don't know if they used to just get plus one strength, but they also get plus one attack. Now it's plus two strength. So, like, what, Power Fists become, what, strength 10? So they can, like, punch vehicles better, I guess, or little axes or whatever. I agree. Wraith Guard definitely needed that nerf. Demons. They put in a battle line tax. So you can't have more non-battle line than battle line for a god means that they're just but it seems like they're trying to curb the whole big monsters only list where it's like well you can take big monsters but take little stuff with them as well so it's not just bellacor and friends so that makes sense chaos space marines um i love all the changes to chaos space marines you can't put nurgle or like undivided models inside of a nurgle transport good they changed the nurgle strat to be 18 inches away so you can get a little closer and like you can you don't have to get super close to kill a nurgle transport or nurgle vehicle anymore um undivided now is just reroll wound rolls like the strat that they had it's undivided and it's reroll wound rolls instead of just reroll hits and wounds so that's big accursed cultists down to OC1, and they can only bring models back in their command phase. I played against the Cursed Cultists this weekend. Great change. Great change. That'll definitely help curve like how silly Chaos was, for sure. Um, yeah, the, the connection's terrible. Uh, Death Guard. Um, 
just a really good detachment rule. Putrefier is only once per turn per unit. Death Watch is the same. They didn't really change. So here, Drukai. Change the effect uh, in the for pain token to also give plus one AP in close combat. Oh, I'm so excited about that. That makes me so freaking happy. Plus one AP in combat is great. I love it. That can stick. And Archon can join Incubi. Reroll wounds for Incubi, baby. Incubi are back on the table, which is very exciting. Uh, Gene Steel Cult pretty much the same. Uh, Grey Knights got some boost to their guns, I guess, um, as well. Imperial Knights, pretty much the same, didn't really change too much there. Leagues of Votan stayed the same. Space Marines stayed the same with their Space Wolves. They do their uh, sagas every player turn now, so it's like instead of just battle rounds, it's like player turn. And World Eaters, big changes here. Um, the, the Berserker Glaive is nowhere near as good as it was, it's just a straight plus one to the stats. Favor of Corn is once per battle you get a reroll, so it's less likely to bring back Angron or to get exactly what you need. You can like reroll it once per game. And then Demon Prince gives an invulnerable save of a five plus, unless you already have one. So it's kind of curbs the whole crazy jackal cultist stuff. And that's it. That's pretty much it. The biggest issue for me, or the biggest thing for me, was all the Eldar changes, the World Eater changes. And, of course, the Drukari changes, because I am super pumped about that. Okay. Now, they updated the rules commentary. Demons should have minions. That makes a lot of sense. It does. You know, having demons, like, force them to take stuff or whatever is very, very important. But then we have the rules commentary. So, uh, basically, like, you can go through this in detail. There's going to be tons of content that goes through this in detail. I'm not going to go through absolutely everything. They change like adding models to units. If you resurrect models, you can do it while you're in reserve, right? So they just kind of added that in. Um, so if you have any way of getting back, going into strategic reserve when you're placed on the table, like it doesn't matter if you deep strike or not. If you get put into strategic reserves, you can come in turn two because you count the turn. Like you can come in turn one or whatever just for that turn. So it's like you can use abilities of like pull a model off, bring them back on right away for like pretty much all units. Um, clarified some battle shock stuff not that it really changes too much uh some charging thing um normal move stuff now contested objectives and control objectives like they basically said at the end of any phase you can take an objective away even if it's like a end of the turn sticky objective thing they just clarified no it's just end of phase whoever holds the objective can just take the objective away um which makes sense and then we go to uh damn it like characteristic modifiers and stuff they kind of clarify being like yes you, you know uh if you ignore modifiers you ignore half damage and all that stuff for like damage rolls for your weapons and things like they just said yes it is really really strong so trajan's still very very good um you can't like double or triple down advance rolls with like stuff instead of advancing or whatever so they clarified that uh, embarked units and reserves, you can get out of a transport after it comes in from reserve. However, you have to stay out of nine inches, which is a pretty, like, we were seeing that as pretty standard. Um, <clears throat> hazardous, you can't use one-shot weapons coming out of vehicles. They clarified that you have to allocate hazardous to a model until it dies. So if you've got, like, a character in the unit, you can allocate character, like, wounds to the character, but then you'd have to allocate to the character until it dies. Basically poking fun at crisis suits. For people who were like, I'm going to give my commander four of these wounds, and then I start getting... Like, they, so just change that whole gaminess of it, which is good. I like. There's a lot of like changes in here that make a lot of sense to me. Um, there's the objective secured one. One-shot weapons cannot be shot out of a vehicle. If you have a one-shot weapon, you cannot use firing deck on it, which solves the whole issue of like, it's the vehicle firing and not the unit, so you could use a one-shot weapon multiple times i'm looking at you dustin henshaw and your gene steel occult demo charges out of trucks which was silly they clarified that if you have a rule like infiltrate when you redeploy a unit you can indeed use your infiltrate which is cool actually it makes uh, makes some cool like sneaky ploys where you can like infiltrate over here and then redeploy infiltrate over here like there's some cool stuff built in that but of course that happens before you know who goes first so it's always a little risky, which is neat. Um, 
Scar, we finally got a detachment. It's a good day in the Dark City. Yeah, I know. The buffering is definitely on my end. But I will be posting this as a full video um, later today. There's also a battle report coming out and a, uh, in like 10 minutes with a new detachment. So make sure you go see that. Uh, they clarified the splitting units thing. So a Venom can only split a unit one time into two five strong units. Stri five strong Cabalites or Witches. Which makes sense. The people who were like saying you could just do it over and over again. Like, come on. Like, really? Yes, I know it's buffering so much. My apologies to all of you. Um, so then we go vehicles with bases and stuff. That's not, hasn't really changed a lot. Like it's, there's some quality of life improvement stuff in here, right? There's the ignoring modifiers change. And then we got some core rules. So command rerolls stay the same. Rapid ingress basically stays the same. It just basically says if you have deep strike, you can rapid ingress with deep strike. It doesn't have to be strategic reserve because there was like a bit of a mix up there as well. Hey, Oliver Griffith, thank you to the thank you for your support as a member, as a denizen. Yeah, we have another denizen. Yeah, thanks. Really helps the channel out a lot. So that's really appreciative. I am really appreciative. Appreciate. Yeah, I guess. Did I even say that right? OK, well, let's dive in to the. Let's see. We've got some index scar changes. Going to skim through this. Like, make sure you always check this kind of stuff. Some things get changed, some things don't. I don't think it's really changed too much. There's just like a couple of little things, like adding keywords to the data, the index cards and things like that, like stuff that just um, they might have missed here or there. You know, like uh, witches, for example. They're like, you know, ha Lilith didn't have the succubus keyword, for example, which is just, and their, their splinter pistols did not have NTM23, which didn't make sense, et cetera, et cetera. So just, just keep an eye out for stuff like that. I don't think they've really changed anything too much. Just some weapon option stuff and whatnot where there was like some misprints, basically. So let's keep that. So now let's dive into the Minotaur and Fuel menu. Oh, heck yeah, Austin. I'm going to, that's the, I'm leaving that to last. Best, you leave the best for last. That's just how this works. We are going to go through the detachment. And that's where, we're gonna, where I'm going to spend most of my time with this stream. So, Minotaur Field Manual. Um, changes. Games Workshop, thank you very, very much for doing this. I don't know why it took you so long, but things that went up are in red. Things that went down are in an off green, right? So, I know by looking at this, that three things went up and some things went down. And that makes my job a lot easier. And as a person who likes playing this game, it means I don't have to worry about it so much. So, Flagons went up. Yes, Exorcist went up. Yes, Vol went up. But things like Dominions, Paragons, Repentia, um, Retributors, and Zephyrm went down. You were never really seeing those units. Maybe Vol and the Paragons, but like her points up and their points down kind of evens out. Flagellants going up. 30 points of unit is warranted. They were silly for 120. They were so silly. So now you're paying like 90 points extra for the three big bricks. However, they're still worth it. And they're still incredible. And uh, something that I would definitely keep in mind. So then we have custodies, point drops, five point drops on basically all of their infantry units. Nothing crazy there. I think you're just going to... So, like, if you had four big four-person bricks in your list, you're going to have 100 points left, which adds a Calidus to your list. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's not a bad trade. Mechanicus didn't get any changes. Brand new Codex. I would assume they don't really want to change it too much. Let the Codex simmer. Let it play out. See how it looks in about six months. And then they'll go from there. Titanicus didn't need changes. Eldari. Only... Uh, two points increases. Night Spinner goes up. 30 points or whatever. Good riddance. You know, that's good. Night Spinners are incredible. They they deserve to go down, up in points. Wraith Guard also going up in points as well. You saw them in every single list almost. It's good that they went up. Right, in my opinion. Um, Ages of the Imperium, fine. Nothing there. Astro Militarum, just the Manticore went up. Everything else stays the same. I think Guard are in a great spot competitively. Oliver says new rules and sculpts to come as well. Good times. Yeah, we'll see all of that stuff, right? It'll be really neat as that happens. Black Templars, the three baddies, Crusader Squad, Grimaldus, and Helbrick went up in points. Makes sense. They were way too cheap. <laughs> like, sub 100 points for Grimaldus 
or sub 100 points for Hellbreak was bonkers, is what it was. Then we have Blood Angels. Uh, they are fine as well. Then we have Chaos Demons. Um, they were lots of point decreases there, except for Nurglings and the Blue Scribes, which you saw in almost every list outside of Demons. However, now if you take characters, right? Keep characters or non battle line units that are of a certain god. You need to take a battle line of a certain god. So, in order to take the blue scribes, you need to take blue horrors or pink horrors or whatever that are battle line. And then you can take the blue scribes. So, it keeps like a bit of a balance there, which is quite nice. Chaos Knights, huge point decreases. Look at that. Only the brigand goes up, but that makes sense because that was the best one. Uh, but I love that now, like, that looks cool. I don't know how many points you would save, but that looks really neat. Uh, Chaos Space Marines, a Cursed Up, Lord Up, Chosen Up, Forge Fiend Up, a Blitz Up, Warp Talons Up, Dark Commune Up, Lord of Skulls Down. But like that, that's all the stuff that you saw in every competitive list went up, and then the Eye of Zinch goes up as well. Like, it's just good. It's good that they change this stuff and force people to play something different. Dark Angels, point decreases. Sure. Makes it a little bit more palatable. Death Guard, combination, downs and ups. Crawler and Marines go up because you were seeing them in every list. Some of the characters, the Death Strat Terminators, the Bloat Drones, you know, some of the things they want to see more go down. Like, they give and take a little bit here, which is good. Death Watch, nothing changes. And then we have my favorite Drukari. So, in the Drukari, we've got lots of downs, um, like Helions, which you never saw, Drazar, and Grotesques. You'd never really see them. Raider, awesome. Venom, da like, down. Reavers, down. Succubus, down. Talos, down. Incubi, down. Lots of downs. And then the bomber went up. Why? <laughs> the bomber was, like, one of my favorite models. Why would it go down? Why? Why would you do this to me? It's nuts. It's wild. Uh, okay. However, Raider and Venom going down. Good. Um, Succubus going down. Okay, she's super cheap now. Talos going down. Awesome. Like, my competitive list that I posted a film about yesterday went up, went down, like, 100 points. Incredible. That means I get to add, like, a whole other unit. And then with the detachment changes, which we'll see in a second, Incubi are money, which is awesome. Really excited about that. Gene Steal Cult? Yeah, they got cheaper Gene Stealers. Look at that. That's going to make them OP. <laughs> That's sarcasm, by the way. Grey Knights, the Librarian went up. That You saw like three Librarians in most Grey Knight lists, so good riddance. Look at this. Imperial Knights, super cheap. Maybe we'll see them back. Who knows? Is this enough to save the faction? Let me know with a comment down below. Votan, Thunderkin, Hearthguard, and Sagittor up. Makes sense to me, you know. I think that works really well. Then we had Necrons, Orcs. Bunch of stuff, like Knobs went up. Squig Hog Boys went up, Truck went up, and then like some things went down, but it doesn't like Orcs are still good. I don't think that changes them too much. Space Marines, Aggressors went up, Infernus and Intercessors went down, and Assault Intercessors went down, things you like never really see. Heavy Intercessors went down, Outriders went down, and then Inceptors and Centurions went up, because why not? Redemptor went up, Whirlwind went up, Scout Squad went up, Gulliman went down, Sturgard went down, because it's a new kit. They haven't sold enough, you see? You see, you see, you see? You see, you should buy some Stern God as well. Um, hopefully we can make something work with that. Space Wolves, nothing. Tau, a couple of things went down. Anything that wasn't a Cold Star. And then Crisis Suits, go up. Yeah, 400 points for six. Oh, that's pricey for a bunch of Crisis Suits. Riptide went down a little bit as well. Thousand Suns, no changes. Tyranids, mixed bag. Some things went down, some things went up. It's just, yeah. Like, Gargoyles went up because they're, like, all the time used. Neurolictor, Death Leaper, they used all the time went up. Pyrovores used all the time went up. Didn't change anything, really. World Eaters, some up, some down. Let me know what you think down below. And that's that. So now we get to talk about the thing that everybody wanted us to talk about in the first place. Brand new Drukari detachment called the Sky Splinter Assault. Now, this is awesome. So we got some love. Instead of changing the real space raid detachment, they were like, you know what? Let's give them a whole new detachment. I think it's a window into the design philosophy that they're having for 
uh, the design philosophy that they're having for like the Drukhari in general. So in the detachment itself, you when you disembark from a transport until the end of the turn, you have ignore cover on your ranged weapons and your melee weapons have the lance ability. That alone is incredible and is like awesome. You get out with your... All I can think about is little Cavalite warriors jumping out of their transports with their Dark Lance, their Blaster, their Shredder, their Splinter Cannon, right? And then being able to just ignore cover, which in makes the AP of the Splinter Cannon relevant all of a sudden. You know, that AP1, relevant now, right? AP3, relevant now. AP4, really relevant on the Blaster. Very, very good. And then Lance in combat. Witches with plus one to wound when they charge out of a transport. Incubi with plus one to wound when they charge out of a transport. It's going to make them do damage. I really like this. Then we have, as enhancements, four new enhancements. So Drakari model, within six inches of friendly transport, their unit gets cover and stealth. Neat. Sadistic Fulcrum, Dr Drakari model, when you spend a pain token for the unit... You can pick a transport within three, and that transport is empowered. So great for like a shooty unit, for example. Spiteful Raider. Uh, when the unit destroys an enemy unit, the fight phase on an objective, you get an additional pain token. This is very cool for like just pain token generation. And then Nightmare Shroud, which is my favorite. When you disembark from a transport, the unit and the character cannot be overwatched. Very powerful. I think you're going to see the Nightmare Shroud in like every Drukhari list. Um... <laughs> Because it's so good. Then we have six fantastic stratagems. Vicious Blades. Like a tank shock, um, but in the fight phase. So, you fight with a vehicle, and then you spend a CP, and then you roll a dice for every model inside of the vehicle to do mortal wounds on a 5+. Very similar to a grenade or a tank shock, except if they're racks, it's on a 4+. Awesome. Max is six mortal wounds. So, in terms of mortal wound potential, you can grenade, then you can tank shock, then you can Vicious Blades and do like three different, like, it's awesome. It's really, really cool. Then if you have like Reaver Jet Bikes in there, you can do Mortals in the Movement Phase too. Slap, yeah. So you've got Movement Phase Mortals. Then you've got uh, Charge Phase Mortals. Then you've got Shooting Phase Mortals. And you've got Assault, uh, Fight Phase Mortals. So it's like a lot of Mortal Wounds that you can like really put on a tough target that you need to kill. And the cool thing is, it's not like against the infantry only or whatever. It's like anything. You can just, they just stab out of their little raider. So cool. So, so cool. Um, pounce on the prey. So an infantry unit from your army disembarks from a transport that moved. You can charge with the infantry unit. Incredible. They basically gave our tanks assault ramps. So you can move a venom 14 inches. Disembark your incubi within three. That's 17 inch movement. And then spend a CP and they can charge. Awesome. Oh, I, like that alone is worth this detachment. Then we have the Wraith-like Retreat. This is a little bit more nuanced. You fight. At the end of the fight phase, an infantry unit that fought can then fall back or make a normal move. Um, so if you kill your enemy unit in combat, you can make a normal move. Like, But uh, it, unless it's witches, you have to end close to a transport and you have to embark in the transport. So witches have a little bit more wiggle room with this this stratagem other units are restricted to like move and get into a transport which could be really useful to get them into the fight faster or whatever however it can it's not like it sounds cooler than it is because you need a transport near them and usually our transports are very squishy and they die really fast then we have skyborne annihilation unit that gets out of a transport spend a cp they get sustained hits one or sustained hit two if they're Cavalite Warriors. And I was keeping track of this in my last battle report that I did. You roll a six to hit with a Dark Lance, that's three hits with a Dark Lance. You roll a six to hit with a Blaster, that's three hits with a Blaster. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> anyway, that was just really fun because I was like, you can park your Venoms behind like a wall, jump out of the Venom on the other side of the wall, Use this command, use this stratagem on them, and then give them a pain token, and they're like a little rat, they're like a little scourge unit of doom. <laughs> it's so cool. They're just like ah, daka, daka, daka. they just kill everything. It's really, really great. Uh, you cannot embark on a transport with a scourge unit. You cannot do that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what happens there. Then we have a couple more swooping mockery. 
This one's cool. Uh, enemy unit ends their move within nine inches of a transport. Pick a transport, move it six inches. It's like a fire. It's like a, a phantasm for transports. I think this is probably one of the more powerful stratagems of this detachment. And last but not least, night shield four up involve we'll save for a, for a vehicle, any vehicle. So this is giving me huge, like, Tantalus vibes. Put a Tantalus... This is for fun, right? Put a Tantalus with an Incubi... Uh, an, a Cabalite unit with an Archon with a Court. And then you give them the, you know, when I'm empowered, when I'm empowered, I can empower my vehicle, right? So you can, like, get out, empower them. That empowers the, the Tantalus for free. So, you know, it's very efficient paint token-wise. And then they you can give them Sustain 2, and they've got Lethal Hits, Sustain Hits, Reroll Hits, Reroll Wounds... <laughs> <laughs> and ignore cover. And then if they charge something, they charge something with the Tantalus, boom, they can, like, fight, right? Then you get the Tantalus uh, to fight as well, and then after the fight phase, they fall back, get back into the Tantalus, and then rinse and repeat and do it all over again. Like, it, you can do it with a raider, with, like, a small unit, or, you know, there's, like, different things you can do. It's cool to have options, and it feels like it's going to be a lot of fun to play them. Let's just say that. We'll see our flying boats all over the place for these points. Six Raiders, six Venoms, nine are points on the nose. Could be a nightmare. Yes, exactly. It could be. There you have it. So that's really the detachment. I don't think they really changed any of the data sheets. Um, it, I don't think they did change any of the data sheets at all. I don't see any like, red on the data sheets or nothing. Like They did change a couple of point values here and there. Like Drazar is pretty cool. You know, like he gives a plus one to wound all the time. You know, uh, but then, so that like he that's Lance for him, I guess. But it's really about Archons with Incubi jumping in. So there is a battle report going up on my channel. Make sure you check that out. I will also be doing a lot of stuff for the Drukari coming up. I'm going to be writing some articles. I'm going to be doing some videos. So make sure you check that out. And don't forget, I have a Patreon. We talk about Drukari all the time. I do 40k coaching. If you want to learn how to be a Drukari player or kind of fine-tune your skills, head on over there and give me some support. You can always like, share, and subscribe to the content if you so wish. And other than that, I hope you have a fantastic week. And let's go with the Drukari. I'm really excited to see what you build with this Sky Splinter Assault. I already have a list. It's already up on my Patreon page. I'll put a link in the pinned comment if you want to go take it out. It's draft number one, and you'll see me develop that list over time because I will be taking it to a couple of events and all that good stuff as well. So make sure you stay tuned for that too. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, everybody. This has been awesome. I really appreciate all your support. I've been Scary, your grateful host, signing off until next time. Scary out. Ah, the Dark Kin. Bye, everybody.